Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the next installment on country life in Japan. Now, today, the importance of a good cup of coffee. Uh, this is a concept which a universal concept held dear to many hearts around the world. How do you make that perfect cup of coffee? Well, this is an endless uh, question. Um, and I've been following this, uh, looking for answers to this question my whole life. And that during my lifetime, I've come up with, uh, I've come across quite a number of uh, coffee makers, some of them good, some of them bad. And I have whittled my collection down to some of the best coffee makers I've ever found. And here they are here. So today I'm going to explain uh, how to make the perfect cup of coffee uh, using my favorite machine. Now on this table I have uh, machines collected over the, over the decades, and it did take decades to find these. And I have to say the best one in this collection is, without a doubt, the Atomic. Um, our Australian viewers will be familiar with this machine. Um, it is not that, actually not that well known around the world. It's big in Australia. It is starting to get known in Japan. Um, maybe in the UK they have it. Uh, anyway, it's not as common as you might think, uh, but it is the best. And it's, it is called the Atomic. It was devised in the Atomic Age when, the, um, when atomic power was going to be the next big thing. And so they designed it to look like a nuclear reactor uh, or perhaps a swan. It's kind of swan-like. There's the swan neck, the swan head. Anyway, it's, it's one of those things that I like about mid-century design where it has perfect function and beauty, the perfect mixture of uh, elegant design and function. It just doesn't look good. It delivers. It gives you the best coffee possible. So just look at that. It, it is, uh, as the Americans call, nuke-proof. It is solid. You cannot break this. You can use it a lifetime. In fact, you can leave it to your son and your grandson. It is that well made. Uh, no coffee, coffee, coffee makers that I know come close to that. Use it a lifetime. Um, very durable, very durable. And it makes perfect coffee. Um, although they're not that popular, uh, possibly because they're quite expensive. Uh, oh, by the way, they still make these today. This is actually the new one. This is the original 1950s one. They're almost similar uh, in every way. The, the new one, I can, I can say, is, is, is very, very good. Although there's just one small point that they failed to uh, achieve, and that is the... Um, there's one small point that doesn't live up to the original, and that is this curve here. They didn't put enough curve on the coffee pot. You see that's the original is the one on your left, and the new one is the one on the right. So when you're doing this, the new one drips, it drips back here. But that's the only fault I've found with it. Uh, so the original jug is much better than the reproduction jug. Now part of the reason why these coffee makers probably never um, took off was because they require quite a bit of skill to operate. You need to be able to drive one of these. You just don't put it in and forget it. There's a there are tricks to make it work properly and unless you know what you're doing you may make a terrible cup of coffee with these and I suspect many people didn't do it right and couldn't work out what was wrong and so they just gave up on it and thought well that's a terrible coffee maker. Anyway today I'll show you how to do it correctly. So let's start with this coffee maker. Uh, first we have to put water in it so let's go to the kitchen and get some water. The question of how much water, well, there's nothing glass in this to see how much water is in it. So you can only tell by weight or by, by, just by swash, sloshing it around to know how much water is in it. A good guide is, is just to use the jug. What goes in is what comes out. So we don't want that much coffee. Don't forget that these coffee makers make steam, so they need extra water uh, for the steam. So we just put that in there like that. And 
And this amount of slosh is, is the correct amount of water usually, if it sounds like that. Put the cap on. Right, let's take it back to the stove. It's on the stove. We have to put the coffee in. Just put that there. Just think, I'm just going to wash my hands. For the... You can never be too clean in the kitchen. Right. Now here is the key factor. It doesn't matter what kind of coffee you use this in these things. The most important thing is how fine the grind is. Co coffee bought at the supermarket will not work. Coffee bought at your favorite coffee roaster will not work. You have to get it specially made. Um, so when I go to my coffee maker, my coffee local co coffee roast, roaster, he has this big machine for grinding it. I tell him, set the dial to zero. That means the absolute finest grind you can get. So it's almost like Turk Turkish coffee. It's, it's a fine powder like that. And you have to tap it down, fine powder, about that much. We're not making, we're not making four cups today. We're only making about two, so that's about enough. And the reason that you need fine ground grind is because this itself is the pressure valve in these things. Um, in this type of coffee maker, there's a pressure valve in there which regulates the, the, the steam pressure. These atomics do not have a pressure valve. So what's stopping the water going through them? So the only thing stopping them is the coffee itself. So you have to more or less block off the flow of the coffee so that the steam will build up. If you do not do this, you, you won't get any steam or you won't get decent steam. So yeah, I've just pressed it down, pop that in there. You put this in the machine. Locked in. Next, gas on. Oh, by the way, these do not work very well on an electric stove. You'll just be paying a huge amount for power. They do require quite a bit of energy to run. So the only way to do it, it the only way to do it properly is with gas. In fact, I'm gonna use the other ring. Uh, you need a burner with a small ring like that. You don't want flames going around the outside of it. And on it goes. Now we just wait for about five minutes. Okay, we're starting to get the steam coming out of here now. So it's time to close off the steam valve, which means it's close to uh, boiling. Well, it's over boiling point and it's close to uh, the time when it starts to come out of here. Have a look at the top. Note it's coming out slowly. Uh, Depending on how hard you push it in, it re regulates the speed that this comes out. I've actually pushed it in quite hard, almost too hard, I think. It's coming out too slowly. Now it's starting to come out at the right speed now. So if your coffee rushes out quickly, it's too, you'll lose all the flavor and you'll lose all the steam. So that's the, why it's important to have fine grind coffee and to press it down to give you this pressure. I mean, look at that pressure. That's a lot of pressure. Now here's the trick. The trick which is uh, largely unknown. When you're making coffee like this, the flavor actually changes halfway through. The longer this is on here, the le the the more the flavor uh, deteriorates. And it, you've just got to judge the right point. Usually at about the point where these bubbles start coming out, I actually switch, now watch this. Here's the trick. 
at about this point where it starts to make bubbles it's hard, this is the timing is difficult but I'm, I'm saying about here switch that over so I've switched that over with another one now the only coffee I'm going to drink is the first stuff this I will throw away and because we're making coffee latte today I'm going to make some steam this up now you can tell just by the sound of that that that's a good head of steam Turn off the gas now. So I've turned off the gas, but as you see, still plenty of steam. And this is what you want. If your atomic maker is not making this amount of steam, you're doing something wrong. Plenty of steam. Right, let's take the original coffee. And it's very dark and black, almost like crude oil. And the trick is to use a low proportion of coffee, well, a low ratio of coffee and a high ratio of milk. So there, I've only just put in just a couple of teaspoons of coffee in there, but it's so rich, that's all you need. So there, there's actually about, you can make maybe three cups out of that. It is so rich. So there you have it. I put it in a glass today so you can see the, uh, the color of it. So you can see it like that. That's a good cappuccino or latte. You want nice frothy, frothy cream on the top, milk on the top and getting darker towards the bottom. Let's try it. Mm, not bad, not bad at all. Mm, I don't usually drink this in summer. It's just, you break out in a sweat. Um, but my, my winter coffee is usually this. Of course, this you can just put it in the fridge later and mix it with, with water and milk to have iced coffee. That's what I usually do in summer. So there you have it, the world's best coffee machine. You ready? Hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. <clears throat> so this is going to be about what? Coffee, making a cup of coffee, coffee gadgets, or my collection, or country life in Japan, or anything I want. Okay, hang on, let me think. What am I going to start this? You ready? Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the next installment on country life in Japan. <laughs>